Well, we found these interesting Bitter Creek Models uh, four-wheel cold jimmies at the Ogden Train Show. Yeah, those are neat. They're really cool. And I thought, you know, I wonder if we couldn't use those as mine cars in our scale. <laughs> I don't see why not. Well, they look, they look good. There they are sitting on uh, the mine track. So, yeah, that's that was our plan. That's our goal. There's a couple of things that are going to be different. We don't need to put the couplers on because... I'm not planning to run them. Right. <laughs> and then also they have HO scale uh, brake wheels, and those would look rather silly. So I'm not going to use those either. Well, don't throw them away. I will find a use for them somewhere for something. This is the box that the models came in, Bitter Creek Models, Afton, Wyoming. So if you're interested, uh, check out their website. Right. They make a lot of really neat kits, very much like this one. So let's open the box and see just what in the world is in here. This is, uh, here are the instructions. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot to the instructions, but it also doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot to building the car. Just a few pieces. Yeah, pretty simple build. Sometimes, however, looks can be deceiving. That's true, <laughs> especially on the other side of the page is blank. Yes. I learned a long time ago that that which appears to be simple is quite often deceiving. Yes, especially with those tiny parts. Well, and these craftsman kits are always, there's always going to be something about them that's going to be a little tricky. Right. So here's the exploded view. We can see that there are just not a lot of parts here. There's the, uh, the wood floor, which is actually laser board, looks like wood. And then the four sides that connect to that, the, the dump mechanism for the center of the car, the brake wheel and handle, the side frames, and two axles. I see, huh. Everything's rather neatly packaged in these little plastic envelopes, so carefully cutting that open so as to not damage anything that's inside. Here is the laser cut floor, the laser board, and uh, it's in two pieces, so the two pieces will have to be glued together. And then the rest of the kit is principally white metal castings. A few other little bits and pieces, but principally it's all white metal castings. Well, that looks easy to put together. So the first thing is going to be to clean up these castings. Whenever you're dealing with a white metal kit, there's always a certain amount of flash or gates and burrs and that sort of thing. And that's certainly true here. Not a lot of cleaning to do, but it looks like there's going to be a fair amount of cleanup on the side frames. So of course the tools used here are a pair of sharp nippers and uh, needle files. There you go. The trickiest thing to clean up are the side frames. There's a fair amount of sprue uh, that run between the various pieces. The metal that they're made out of is very, very soft. And the upside of that is it's not brittle. It's not likely to break. The downside of that is that it's very easy to bend. And then that's going to create a problem once it's painted, because if you accidentally bend this, you're gonna knock all your paint loose. The back side of the side frames is where the, the bearings are for the axles. And these have been drilled. They're not just cast, but they've actually been drilled out. And that's a really nice feature. The car sides are really good. Just a tiny amount of cleaning up on those. And those should go directly onto the car. There are also the car ends and then these bars which will cross over the bins and then the belly dump parts. One thing I found is that my car ends are just ever so slightly larger than the floor, and therefore I had to take a little material off once I saw just exactly how wide they needed to be. That's better than having them come up short. All you need to do is remove a little material to get them to square up with the car sides. So this was my plan, was to assemble, 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 assemble? <laughs> this using the medium thick uh, CA glue with kicker. And I like to put the kicker in these little needle applicators so you can really control it. But as I was doing this, 
It was a disaster. Well, I can see what the problem is. You've got your bottles reversed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a problem. And actually, the big problem here is the medium just wasn't working. You suggested using the thick. The thick glue, yes. That's my favorite. And then you handed me your little spritz bottle with kicker in it. Yes. And that saved the day. Good deal. Now, I, I would think you'd need to clean that metal up a little bit before you apply glue. Well, absolutely. It's, it's actually got a... It feels like an oily film, but I think it's just the talc mold release that they use for oh, white metal. Oh, yes. And I tried washing it off. I finally just ended up taking sandpaper to it. Right. And that worked. Good. Now, the very first thing that you need to do is to glue the two halves of the floor together. The scribed side goes up. The bottom side has some, some scribing front to back. Uh, and then those two pieces simply glue together. And then at that point, you're ready to glue the car sides to the floor. I'm using the Micro Mart assembly jig that we bought. Boy, that thing has paid for itself. I don't know how many times over. But anytime you need to assemble something with really square corners, it's just a really great way to put that together. Structures, anything where you need square corners. Oh, neat. Now you have to be really careful not to glue your model to your jig or your fingers or whatever else is there. <laughs> I thought about entering that in the contest. A model completely stuck to the jig with your hands all stuck to it. Well, I know this because I leave a little bit of me in everything I make. Now you need to leave a space uh, at the ends here where the ends of the car will glue on. And since I wanted to start with one of the long sides, I just took one of the car ends and stuck it in here upside down. I, did, I didn't glue it like this, of course, just to use as a spacer so I could set the, uh, the spacing correct where the floor connects to the side of the car. I thought about gluing the car end on first, but as the car ends are probably going to be just slightly too wide, I want to make sure that I have one of the sides in place first so that I can see how much material I may need to remove from the car ends before gluing them in place. In fact, for the first car, I went ahead and glued both sides on. That way I could see exactly how to fit the car end so that it lined up perfectly. I then used my belt sander, uh, one of those tabletop belt sanders, to remove a little material from the ends of the car end so that uh, it would slide neatly between the two sides. On the other car, I decided to go ahead and glue one side on and then the ends and just remove the material from the ends to make sure it was nice and square and flush. Both systems worked really well, but I found on both cars, I did need to remove a little material from the sides of the car ends to get it to line up with the floor. Now, it's critical that these car ends don't hang down past the bottom of the wood floor. If they do, you're going to have a problem later on when you put the, uh, the side frames in place. I didn't quite realize that, and so I had a problem putting one of my side frames in place. You know, that looks like it would just be so easy to do. Sometimes just a simple square model like this is the trickiest thing. Uh, yeah, I've discovered that. And then anytime you just have butt surfaces that just glue together, that's a little bit tricky too. It is. Because everything has to be perfectly in alignment and your joints perfectly smooth or the whole thing is going to fall apart. Right. Okay, we're now ready to glue the hatch on the bottom of the car. The side frames actually attach to the hatch, so it's very critical that this be centered perfectly side to side so that your side frames are perfectly centered side to side as well. Now, notice that this car end is up slightly here, and this is what I was talking about, how this created a problem when I went to put the side frames in place. I didn't really want to knock the whole car apart in order to try to push that thing up in place. And I didn't want to try to carve that material away. So I just uh, instead trimmed the ends off of the side frames so that they wouldn't uh, run into the, the end of the car there where it hangs down. 
Getting these side frames in place actually turned out to be the most critical part of the entire assembly because if they're not flat to the floor, right tied up against the wood floor, you're going to have a wobble because one will be on the floor and the other one will be slightly elevated at one end. And what that will do is raise one of your wheels. And you can see here that I ran into that problem and this one wheel is not sitting flat. So if I were actually going to run these cars, it would derail. And uh, since I'm not, I'm just using the static models, I decided, well, close enough. But that's a critical thing to make sure that these side frames are right snug against the wood floor. And because I sanded away a little bit of the material on the car ends using my belt sander, I've got a really nice tight seam here where the car ends fit between the car sides. So that all came out great. Then I simply glued the little bar that goes across uh, between the two sides on the top of the car and I'm ready to paint because I'm not going to be putting couplers or brake handles or anything on these because I'm just using them as little mine cars. Well, I think they look really neat and especially as mine cars. Yeah, in this scale, I think they work. I think so. So we're going to be painting them next Tuesday. And of course you want to see that and you want to be notified that that show has gone up. And so if you're not a subscriber, you want to subscribe to the channel so that you will be notified when we paint these. Exactly, or whatever else we're doing with this. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever else we're doing. And the easy way to do that is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Sunday. Right? We'll see you then. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.